Hallelujah. 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 Well, if you're able to be seated, you can be seated. It won't bother me one bit if you stand. It won't bother me one bit if you run. It will bother me if you fall asleep. But I suppose as long as you fall asleep in the Holy Ghost, we'll be okay. But I won't be able to tell the difference, probably. Hallelujah. One thing I don't want you to do is if you sit down in the flesh, do not sit down in the spirit. But rather keep a draw on, keep a demand, keep a draw on the Holy Ghost. Unless you draw waters from the well, you don't get any. Thank you, sir. Unless you draw waters from the well, you don't get any. Did you hear me? Unless you draw water from the well, you don't get any. You guys had some up here the whole time. I apologize. I hear I sent you going to get some and you had some. You had room temperature up here. Perfect. There's water up there the whole time. I didn't know it. I asked for it. I got water. But I can hold this bottle in my hand all day long and my throat will not be refreshed. You have to take. You got to drink. You got to partake of the rivers of water, the rivers of life. Guess what? You can take freely. Take freely. Freely it is given. Freely you can receive. Freely you can give. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I said, bless the Lord. I didn't say repeat me. I said, bless the Lord. That means give him blessings. Give him praise. Give him glory. <laughs> Woo. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have your Bibles? I will be concluding today with what we've been discussing on Sunday mornings. We've been doing a parallel series. I'm saying this now because uh, some questions that were asked of me, and I'm just going to give you my strategy for the last month. Uh, I've tried something a little different. But we've been doing another series on, on Wednesday nights. And somebody asked me, they said, uh, why aren't you doing a series? Because you always give us a, a, a series title, and then you do several steps to this series as we go along. And I said, I really like that. I, I know where we're, where we're headed. I, it keeps me in a, one frame of thought or whatever. Well, I just wanted to try something a little different. Uh, I didn't tell you, but we were doing a series. You can probably have figured that out at least a little bit, but I, I kept things a little more separated and we didn't, didn't run linear like we would typically run. Uh, but anyway, we, we have been talking on the, the same line of things. And so I say that because today we'll be concluding what we've been doing on Sunday morning and Wednesday night we'll be concluding what we've been doing on a Wednesday night. But if you've noticed on Sunday morning, I have been telling you more or less not in these exact words, but I have been telling you that you have faith. You have faith. You have the ability to put your faith to work for you. You have the ability to put your, way, your, your, your faith to work for you. And you have the knowledge to keep the devil at bay, to keep from robbing your faith. You have the ability to believe, you have the ability to do what you believe, and you have the ability to keep what you believe. Okay? And then on Wednesday nights, we've been talking about your faith. We've been have. You just lost me there. We've been talking about what kind of faith you have. That you have a fierce and ferocious faith, a faith that does not give up, a faith that does not quit, a faith that does not cower down in the fight, a faith that always wins. And because you know you always win, you can rest at ease. You don't get anxious, but rather you are a patient people. Why? Because there is no anxiety in faith, there is no anxiety in love, and faith works by love. So therefore, you are a patient person. You patiently wait for the hope of glory. 
You don't wring your hands and wring your mind wondering when and how. Amen. You know that 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 if God said it, and if you believe it, that settles it. Amen. If God said it, that means it's His desire for it, whatever it is, that means it's His desire for it to be yours. And if you believe it, that means you actively receive it and hang on to it. So now you can see how the Sunday mornings and the Wednesday nights have been connecting. Oh, let me make a little interjection here. A couple announcements uh, that were missed. Mandy, help, help me out. What did I miss? What did, what did we miss earlier? Oh, baby bottles. Baby bottle campaign is going on. So don't forget to be filling those things up and bring them back uh, whenever it is. It's in your bulletin. The 14th, February 14th. Okay. And then the second thing? Car wash. Uh, car wash. This Saturday night for the missions trip. Uh, fundraisers, those that are going on a missions trip. There's also a 50-50 raffle. So if there's $1,000 that come into a raffle and you put a buck in and your ticket gets drawn, you get 500 bucks. The missions trip gets 500 bucks and you get 500. You know, if there's $10,000 and you win, you get 5,000 and they get 5,000. If there's $2, you get a dollar and they get a dollar. Anyway, uh, car wash is, I think it starts at 10? 10? 10 to 1. 10 to 1 up at... Uh, Beef O'Brady's up on 98 Carpenter's Way, that intersection there, uh, right by Best Buy, right in uh, Mid Florida Bank, right up in that area. Okay, announcements. Let's get back. Um, you have your Bibles. Yes. All right, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I know we covered these things. I'm going to recap very quickly. How many of you take notes? Good. And I also want to mention to you, I want to do this on a Sunday morning because I've only done this on Wednesday nights so far. All of our messages are recorded. Not only are they on CD, but they're also on our Ustream. They're streamed live. Hello, Internet viewers. We take that Ustream broadcast. We trim it up just a little bit to refine it. And we put it also on YouTube. We now have a YouTube channel. On YouTube, you can download videos. you got to know how to do that. There's all sorts of softwares out there. Um, just Google search how to download a YouTube video, and you'll find 50,000 ways to do it. And if that doesn't help you, you can ask Christian, you can ask myself, you can ask anybody under the age of 20 probably, and they can help you. Uh, you probably can ask people under the age of 5 or 6, and they would know how to help you too. <laughs> anyway, so then we also take those uh, videos, those, those uh, Sunday morning and Wednesday night, Sunday morning and Wednesday night messages. Uh, maybe occasionally there'll be something else, but that's the format for it. Sunday morning and Wednesday night messages that are on YouTube. And we also have a, uh, for lack of a better word, I'm going to call it a sermon player or a message player. Uh, it, it, and it's on that website. And from that player on the website, there's a couple links. If you have an Android phone, you can uh, put a, put a uh, we, don't, we don't supply this app to you. You can get a bunch of them for free. But a podcasting app uh, for your uh, Android phone, your Apple phones have one name already in the phone, but you can get some third-party stuff. Anyway, you can click on that link, and you automatically get updates of when podcasts are created. I like those to get myself. Um, I listen to a variety of ministries, their podcasts. Now I like that I can listen to our own podcasts, because uh, before, when you had it on Ustream, you had to let your phone play it, or your, your, you know, had to play it on the screen. If you're watching on a computer, that's fine. But I like to go to the gym, and I get a good hour and a half worth of good preaching in. Uh, sometimes it's my own. At least this year it has been so far. Um, and I can, you know, lift weights, walk the treadmill, uh, do whatever, and just sit there and listen, and listen to the Word of God. And so that's out there for you, and you can automatically get those updates. You don't have to remind yourself to go get the messages. Uh, it, it will, if you set it up properly, it will do it for you. Okay, I've given you plenty of time to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Are you there? Verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was? Christ. Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent... There's a purpose that they were our examples. These things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lusted, neither be idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Verse 11. 
Now all these things happened unto them for in samples. In verse 6 it uses the word examples. In verse 11 it uses the word in samples. That they, or I'm sorry, and they are written for our admonition. For our instruction. For our guidance. For our correction, if you will. Let me just say this real quick. I don't want to get uh, stuck over here. But correction is not a bad thing. If you were off course and somebody corrected your course, wouldn't you be appreciative? Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. I would. So if you see me going off course, help me out, my dear brother who says you love me. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now, we also looked at Deuteronomy. So flip over there, please. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And in verse 1, Deuteronomy chapter 11. I'm sorry. Well, I don't want to go all the way back to verse 1. That will be just a little too far. How about... We start out with verse 8. Therefore shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whither you go to possess it. So you have the children of Israel here, and they're being given commandment of the Lord to possess the land. And we discussed that it doesn't, become, uh, it doesn't come into your hands where you can use it, where you can access it, where you can enjoy it, where you can uh, make use of it. That's just the best way to, to say it. Unless you possess it. Just because it's given doesn't mean you have it. It can belong to you and you not have it. This water up here belongs to the people that speak and that kind of thing, but I don't have it unless I put it in my possession. And then unless I... Unless I drink of it, the water does me really no good. Unless you pour it on a plant, the plant's going to die. You can't, well, I had water. I don't know why the plant died. Well, you didn't water the plant. Right? Right? So we're in Deuteronomy chapter 11. We know we've got to possess the land. And so as we went on, we discussed these things. I should have mentioned this just a moment ago out of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 2, we had water baptism. We had a type of water baptism. We had a type of receiving the Word. We had a type of receiving the Spirit unto salvation. So in essence, you have Israel. They're delivered, taken out of Egypt. They're baptized. That's what the Scripture says. As un, under, under Moses, under the cloud and under the sea. Right? They were fed the Word. They were fed the Spirit. So that's symbolizing salvation, a type of salvation. So in a sense, you have Israel becomes born again. Now these things are in samples unto us. So it's a demonstration. It's a type. It's a picture of our own life. We were once in slavery. We were once in the world, Egypt. A type of the world, a type of sin. We were once in the world. We were once in, in sin. We were once in bondage. We were once slaves to sin. But the Deliverer came. The Deliverer came. The Deliverer came and set you free. Now, we're not really talking about the, when the children of Israel got set free, but I'm still going to slide this in there. Moses came as the Deliverer, as a picture or a type of Christ, as a picture or a type of Jesus. He comes and performs all sorts of miraculous things. And the final thing that set the people free was death. The final blow was the death of the king's son. Now, I'm not saying that Pharaoh is a type of God the Father. But what I am saying is it took something deep. It took something close. It took something personal. It took blood, but it took the life of love Of one in order to set the other free. Frogs didn't do it. Warts didn't do it. The death of cattle didn't do it. I mean, it's just a cow after all. Right? Locusts didn't do it. Hail didn't do it. Darkness didn't do it. It took the death of a son. It took the death of a son. And Pharaoh said, that's enough. I can't handle anymore. 
right? And set him free. Now, imagine this. Pharaoh says, go ahead, take them. But what if the children of Israel would have said, well, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? This is all we know. Now we find out that they said that later. Bring us back to that land where we had leeks and garlic. Bring us back, bring us back, bring us back. And cucumbers. <laughs> bring us back. Let us be slaves again. Don't do that. Don't do Thank God yet they had Moses that corrected them and got them back on course and said, I don't want to look you in the face and say this. <laughs> you idiot! <laughs> what are you thinking? No, I will not take you back. Of course, later on, he's like, God, just kill them all. You know? <laughs> anyway, let me get back to my, my point here. So you can see how foolish that is when they've been set free from Egypt. But it was just as foolish when they get over to Kadesh Barnea, only a year or so later, I need to make this correction because I made it sounded like they, they walked around the wilderness for 40 years and then came to Kadesh Barnea. But they came to Kadesh Barnea in only about a year's time. Okay, they get there. Now, mind you, we already know that the trip from, from Egypt uh, 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 to, to Jer Jer Jericho should have only taken a few days. But nonetheless, it took them about a year um, they, remember, they go down to my, Mount Sinai. I think they get there in about nine months or so. And then in about another couple of months or so, they're up in, in Kadesh Barnea. Eleven months, I think, was the total. Anyway, um, you can look up timelines. There's all sorts of that stuff out there. But um, the point is, they get to Kadesh Barnea, and God says, Go over to that land that I have given you. Now, earlier, he tells them, I will give it you. And now he's telling them, I have given it you. They are across the river from the promised land. Now, mind you, you would say, how are we going to cross the Jordan River? That's not a real hard question when you've already crossed the Red Sea. I mean, my goodness. That's kind of like, God, I need a million dollars. And he supplies you with a million, and then later on the road, you need a thousand. Oh, man, what am I going to do? I need a thousand. No, no, no. A thousand is not a problem after God's met the million. Okay. The Jordan River is not a problem after you pass the Red Sea. It wasn't the Jordan River that was the obstacle. When you read the story, they didn't question the Jordan. They didn't say, how are we going to get across the Jordan? As a matter of fact, there were ways to get there they never even had to cross the Jordan. And there were ways to get over to, to, to Jericho that they never even had to cross the Red Sea, if you look at the maps. But nonetheless, they already passed the Red Sea. Now they're facing the, facing the Jordan. The question wasn't the Jordan. The question was the giants in Jericho. That was the problem. And so we find out that Canaan's land is not a type of heaven like so many people have preached and so many people have thought. Canaan land is not a type of heaven. Why? Because in heaven there are no giants to fight. There are no cities to conquer. There's no battles at all. Because the last battle is death. I think I said that already, didn't I? The last battle that set the children of Israel free was death. The last battle that set all of us free was the death of Jesus. And the last battle that will bring us into the glory of heaven is death. That's the last victory that shall be won. Canaan's land is not a type of heaven, but rather Canaan's land is a type of our rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. Now, simple question, where are you? Thank you, Bill. That means you have access to all of the rights and privileges that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Once you get in, everything that is in is now at your disposal. Amen. Why do people lock things up in safes? 
because they're valuable. And because they're valuable, they don't want just anybody getting their hands on it. It doesn't belong to them. But who has access to what's locked inside? The person with the key or the person with the code, the person with the combination. The person who's been granted access now, obviously, I just said it, they've been granted access. But again, you don't get to take unless you go in and take. That's me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so the children of Israel, we already discussed it and we'll, we'll stop with the discussions here. They had to go in and take possession, right? They have to go in and take possession. Now... That's well covered. You have that. Yes. Amen. You have that well covered, right? Yes, I want us to back up again to Deuteronomy chapter 11, and today we're going to focus on something else that's in here. We mentioned it briefly last week. We're going to focus on it today. So we're in Deuteronomy chapter 11. We just read verse 8. Uh, last week we read several occasions. Well, yeah, yeah. You got to go in and possess it. We read several occasions in, in these verses where it said, The land where you go in to possess. When you go in to possess it. The land that you go in to possess. You shall possess it. And it says it over and over and over and over and over again. Look at verse 21, please. That the days may be multiplied, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. We found out that the days of heaven have come upon the earth. I want you to notice a couple key things about this verse 27. That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children. Who's he speaking to? Okay, if you want to claim it for you, great. Claim it for you. Specifically, he's speaking to those people that lived right then, right now. Because, he says, in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. He's saying it could have been theirs. It was sworn to them. The promise was to them. But they did not go in and possess it. So now I give it to you. You flip over to the New Testament and you find the same thing. The promise was originally given to the Jews. But they did not go in. They did not go in. A few of them did. A few of them did. But they didn't take the promise. They couldn't see what the manifestation of the promise was. Some of them did, but the majority did not. So God said, it was sworn unto them, but now I give it to you. Verse 24, every place whereon the sole of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Verse 29, And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put blessing upon Mount Cherizim, or Cherizim, however you want to say it, Gerizim, I don't care how you say it, that place. And the curse upon Mount Ebel. The blessing and the curse. One mountain has the blessing, one mountain has the curse. You can't live in two mountains on the, at the same time. You can't live on two mountains at the same time. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. I, for one, will take up residence on the mountain of blessing. Howdy, neighbor. <laughs> uh, are you welcoming me or am I welcoming you? Huh? I'm welcoming you. Oh, okay. That'll work. That's fine. Thank you for the, for the sweet welcome. Look at verse 31. For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God gives you. And ye shall possess it and dwell therein. 
32, And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day. And then it goes on. Now, I want you to focus, if you will, on Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 11. Verse 11. We're still in Deuteronomy 11, verse 11. But the land whither you go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys and drinks water of the rain of heaven. Drinks water of the rain of heaven. And verse 14. That I will give you the rain of your land in his due season. The first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thine wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for the cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Let's look at those two verses again, please. Actually, let's back up to verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, and I'll send grass to thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. We're talking about rain today. If you're looking for a title of the message, um, what was my title last week? I don't know. That's a good question. I'm sure it's... I didn't give you a title last week? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. I wrote it right here for myself on this page. Uh, well, it, it should be Possessing the Promises. Possessing the Promises. Today, pray for rain. Pray for rain. We experienced some rain today. I don't really mean this when I say this because I ask the Lord every time I minister and I tell him you have complete reign. R-E-I-G-N. Is there an H in there? No. Okay. You have complete reign. So completely reign. Uh, anyway, I don't say that. I said that this morning. I don't normally say that. Anyway, you have complete reign to move any way you want. I expect that faith rises up in our hearts. I expect that I will speak the words of the Lord, that I will speak them anointed, and you will hear anointed. Okay? So I ask him to move in any way he sees fit, and apparently he sees fit to move in what I want to minister before I minister it. I wouldn't mind, but it's probably a prideful thing to say, wouldn't it be great that I deliver a wonderful message, and boom, there the Holy Ghost comes. Doesn't John know how to get the Holy Ghost to move? Well... No. Doesn't, he, doesn't the Holy Ghost love to move amongst His people? That's what He told us today. Doesn't the Holy Ghost love to move amongst His people? Hallelujah. So now I'm just ex simply explaining what He did earlier. Hallelujah. Glory! Glory. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 11, 11. The land that drinks water of the rain of heaven. And then Deuteronomy eleven fourteen. And I will give you rain, the first rain and the latter rain. Now, we're going to flip several places. Turn to the book of Hosea, please. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. <laughs> oh, I got to back up to verse 1. Come! And let us return unto the Lord. For he has torn, and he will heal. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Hallelujah. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord... His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. 
Then shall we know. Then shall we know. He will come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain, unto the earth. Now we looked at this next passage in Joel. It's just a, just a chapter over. Hosea, Joel. Flip over to your right, probably four or five pages or so. Chapter 2, Joel chapter 2 and verse 23. Are you there? Yes. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Are you glad? Yes. Are you glad? Yes. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Amen. I messed up on a story the other night. Uh, last week, actually, it was at the very end. I didn't have any intention to give you this story, and I messed up on it. I told you the wrong person. It was not Smith Wigglesworth that Kenneth Hagin was speaking about. Uh, it was a guy named Smith. So I had listened to one story about Smith Wigglesworth, and I'll tell you that one. And then I listened to another, guy, another story about a guy named Smith, and I just mixed them up together. That's the problem that you get when you're working out while you're listening. Anyway, every once in a while, things get a little jogged together there. But the real story about Smith Wigglesworth is that most people don't realize that when the man woke up out of bed in the morning for 15 minutes, he would glorify and magnify God, get up, do a little jig in the Holy Ghost before he would even start his day. Wow. And you wonder why there's people like that that have great manifestations of the Holy Ghost in their life. You wonder why people like that live in victory. You wonder why that people like that have God move on their behalf. Well, I tell you why. It's because they take this the right way. They move under the hand of God. They move under the hand of God. They don't necessarily try to get God's hand to move, but they move under the hand of God. Remember the children of Israel? They were baptized under the cloud. When that cloud moved, what, what did they do? They moved. And when the pillar of fire by night moved, the children of Israel moved who was it that showed up in the, uh, the, the Quaker service and they sat there for two hours was it Smith Wigglesworth all right Smith Wigglesworth yeah oh he sat there for a while well the, that's what the Quakers would do they would sit there for hours until the Holy Ghost would shake the place and that's how they got to be known as the Quakers they didn't call themselves that people called them that so they'd sit there and wait till the Holy Ghost Smith Wigglesworth is in a service he got tired of waiting he got up and said if the Holy Ghost doesn't move me, I move the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Well, he didn't literally mean he forces God's hand. What he meant was, is that he had a river of life flowing out of him, and he didn't have to wait till it got all shook up in order to come out. He knew how to stir himself up. He knew how to let the Spirit of God flow. You've got a river of life flowing out of you, even while you sleep. When you wake up in the morning, you don't have to have somebody else stir you. You can stir yourself. Because the water didn't leak out overnight. It didn't drain out overnight. There are no holes in your salvation. Some of you didn't believe that. There are no holes in your salvation. There are no holes in your redemption. If there are holes, there's four of them. One, two, three, four. Jesus has made unto you righteousness. Jesus has made unto you salvation. Sanctification. If there's any holes in your salvation, they're in his hands and in his feet. Where am I? I've gone to preaching. Oh, yeah. Rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord. You've got something to rejoice about. You've got more than one thing to rejoice about. But if all you can think of is one, rejoice about it. And as you get to praising, as you get to magnifying God, as you get to rejoicing, as you get to lifting up Jesus, all of a sudden your problems become small. Jesus becomes bigger, your problems become smaller. 
In all actuality, neither of them changed. But your perception of them sure did. You built up yourself in your most holy faith. Now all of a sudden, your God could do anything. Now all of a sudden, you could do anything with your God. Now all of a sudden, that wall that you've got to jump over just got real small. It's just a speed bump. How many of you have ever been driving down the road and you come to a speed bump and you go, uh-oh, I can't pass over that? No. Now maybe you slow down and you go over with caution because you don't want to spill your coffee. Fine. My car is but it was, yeah, my car is greater. Yeah. But it was no obstacle for you. That wall is no obstacle for your God. But if your God is under your feet, then you can't step very high. But if you'll magnify him, if you'll magnify Jesus, if you'll rejoice in the Lord, your God. If you'll rejoice in the Lord, your God. If you'll rejoice in the Lord, your God. Not somebody else's God, but your God. Hallelujah. Let's move on. For he has given you the former rain moderately. <laughs> We're supposed to be talking about rain. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you. For who? Me. For you. He will cause to come down for you the rain. The former and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. How many of you are overflowing? And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. Amen. No scarceness. There's no scarceness in him. There's no scarceness. There's no scarceness. You know what I think of when I think of the word scarceness? Scared. You get scared that there's not enough. But I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Rejoice in the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Ye shall eat plenty and be satisfied. Not only will you eat plenty, but you will like what you're eating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. Has the Lord dealt wondrously with you? And my people shall never be ashamed. God says his people are never ashamed. What are they never ashamed of? Well, they're never ashamed of the fact that there's no scarceness. They're never ashamed of the fact that they eat plenty and they eat good. They're, they're never ashamed of the fact that he's a more than enough God. They're never ashamed of the fact that he's a mighty God. They're never ashamed of what he's called them to. They're never ashamed of what he's about to bring you into. People that are not ashamed don't hide. Don't hide the glory of the Lord. Don't hide the glory of the Lord. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Never. 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 Hallelujah. Never. All right. Now we're finally at the verses I wanted to get to. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and the handmaids, even the lowest, even the lowest, I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass. And the land where I've sent you to go to possess it, you shall possess it. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Now, I understand the little joke that we use, and we use it sometimes in the right vein, but it's still at the same time, it really puts a bad slant on things. Remember the story of the guy that's talking to his neighbor across the street? Kind of like Tim Allen. What's that show? Home Improvement. Huh? Yeah, Home Improvement. Tool Time is the show within the show, yeah. Uh, I haven't watched that show in a long time. Anyway, so remember he used to talk to his neighbor over the fence. Right, you never saw Wilson. Is it Wilson? Yeah, and and you never saw his face. Right, you just saw the the top half of, of his forehead. Yeah, maybe every once in a while, his, parts of his eyes or whatever. Uh, anyway, okay. So point is, the two neighbors talk, and the one neighbor. This is not Tim Allen and Wilson. They, they didn't have this discussion. They could have. They should have. The show would probably still be on the air because the Holy Ghost would have taken over. Anyway, so one neighbor asked the other neighbor, "Hey, what's your favorite scripture in the Bible?" And wise Wilson says, "Well, I." I don't know that I could really tell you a favorite scripture, but there is this phrase, there is this little line that you find that runs here and there throughout the scripture, and I've, I've adopted really that as my favorite. He says, oh, really? Well, what is that? And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. He said, well, what do you mean by that? He says, I mean, it didn't come to stay. It came to pass. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Now, you can rejoice in that when you're focused on the problem. But the scripture isn't talking about the bad stuff coming to pass. What it's saying is the good stuff is coming to pass. But not to pass through or to pass away, but to come to you. The promises will come to pass. They will come into being. They will come into fruition. If you let them slide out of your hand, shame on you. Don't do that. You ain't got grease on your hands. Grab that thing and hang on to it. Hang on to it. You've received healing. It didn't come to pass. It came to stay. You received salvation. It didn't come to pass. It came to stay. You received deliverance. It didn't come to pass. It came to stay. You received prosperity. It didn't come to pass. It came, come to, pass. It came to stay. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Flip over to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Mind, I want to just point this out real fast. Two phrases there. Two phrases there. They were all in one accord in one place. To be in one accord does not mean to be in the same place. They were both. They were in the same place and they were of the same heart. They were in one accord in one place. One mind. What was the mind? The mind was obedience. Why was the mind obedience? Because Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and tarry. Not all of them did either, but some of them obeyed. 120 of them to be exact. 120 of them went and obeyed the voice. You said, no, 
They weren't there to obey. They were there waiting to get the Holy Ghost. They didn't know what was coming. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own tongue and language. Jump down to verse 12, please. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What does this mean? What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Some translations say these men are just flat drunk. I don't use the term flat. That would be my translation. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, how many stood up? Twelve. Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice. Who spoke? Peter. And said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and listen to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. We read that prophecy. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Verse 19. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. The point I want to get to you is the Holy Ghost falls like rain. The Holy Ghost falls like rain. Flip over to Acts chapter 10, please. You have the story of Cornelius. Cornelius is a devout man, one that feared God with all the house and gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He sees a vision. God tells him, send for this man named Peter. So he does. At the same time, Peter goes up to the rooftop to pray and he sees a vision. In this vision that Peter sees, remember the sheet is let down by the four corners and in it is all manner of beasts and a voice from heaven saying, rise, kill and eat. Peter says back, no, Lord, I've never, t never eaten any unclean thing. And then Lord says, that which I have cleansed, call, that, call not thou unclean. In other words, if I said it's clean, don't lie against me. If I've said it's clean, don't call it unclean. If I've said it's clean, it's clean, so call it clean. Call it clean. Call it what it is, not how you see it. Now, jump all the way down to verse 44. While Peter yet spake. So Cornelius sends for Peter. Peter recognized this is God. Peter goes. He has no clue what's going to happen. He doesn't know. All he knows is, hey, there's a couple guys at my door that said, come. I just saw a vision that said, don't call unclean. He just said, okay, two plus two. I'm going to say it's four. Let's go. And he follows. He gets some instruction that the words he speak will be salvation unto all the house. Right? So that's what he's going to do. Where are we? Verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words. What words? The gospel. The gospel. While Peter yet spake these words. Read these next four words with me. The Holy Ghost 
fell. The Holy Ghost fell. The Holy Ghost fell on how many? All. On all of them. On all, who, who, who was all in this case? Everybody that heard the word. The Holy Ghost fell on them that heard the word. Now, turn with me, if you would, to the book of James. Now, here's our connection, if you will. In, uh, on Wednesday nights, we've been using the book of James. Every service as a uh, springboard. So today we'll pull it over into Sunday morning. James chapter 5, last, book of, last, chapter of the ver uh, last chapter of the book of James. James chapter 5 and verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Remember Joel's prophecy speaks of the coming of the Lord or the terrible day that the Lord come. Well, it won't be so terrible for you and I. Nope. It'll be a good day. So we can rephrase that word terrible to just be incredible. Right? The incredible day of the Lord. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient. Now, if you look at that be patient in the beginning of verse 7. And then you see another term, long patience, in the middle of verse 7. They are the same. If you look at that be patient, it's saying have long patience or long suffering. Have long patience, therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. In other words, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop believing. I don't know the rest of the song. Just don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. That's the kind of faith you have. Faith that doesn't quit. Be patient. You are. Therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord, behold, the husband moon waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Now, let me point out what that means there is that not that he received the rain, because he's going to send the rain. So he's not receiving the rain, he's receiving the harvest that the rain creates. He's receiving the, the produce of the rain. He's receiving the product of the rain. Reminds me of Matthew 15, Mark 4, Luke 8. The sower went and sowed the word. The sower went and sowed the word. Now in the beginning of it, the sower went and sowed seed. And then Jesus explains the parable and he says that seed is the word of God. So the sower goes out and sows the word. The word is seed. But no matter how good of ground that you sow seed into, if it's not watered, it won't spring forth into life. You can plant good seed on bad ground and water it, water it, and it will spring up into life. It won't last, but it will spring into life. Those parables show us that. Some fell on good ground, some fell on bad ground. But if you have good seed in good ground with good water, the harvest will come. Amen? Amen. And somebody says, well, I can sow seed, but I can't make it rain. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Turn with me, please, to Zechariah chapter 10. Zechariah is, what is that, the second to the last book of the Old Testament? Zechariah, Malachi. Yep. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1. Are you there? It's on the screen. We're just looking at one verse. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, 
So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. The Holy Ghost is the rain. The Holy Ghost is the rain. Hosea 6.3. We already read it. In Zechariah 10.1 it says, Ask for rain. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. Well, we discussed it earlier. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11 says, Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Right? Acts chapter 2 verse 17. Peter is speaking and he says, In the last days. In James chapter 5 and verse 7. They didn't get up there very fast. There, there we go. Be patient unto the coming of the Lord. We are in the last days. We are in the last days. Now the disciples were in the last days. That's who some of these things were written to. They were in the last days. How much more are we in the last days? How much more are we in the last days? The time of the end is getting closer and closer and closer. That means the rain should be falling more and more and more and more. The rain is coming more and more and more and more. You say, well, but I haven't seen the rain. Yeah, that's because you stay in the house with your umbrella up. <laughs> if you get out there to where the dry and parched land is, the rain will come. If you get out there and you'll plant seed into the ground, the rain will come. If you go out there and you'll act on the word and you'll preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the rain will come. The rain will come. You have got to believe that. You have got to believe that. Why do you believe that? Because the word said that. Matthew 9, 35 through 38. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. There are a multitude of people out there. They say that there's more people on the face of the earth today than have ever existed from the time of creation on. There are multitudes of people out there. Have compassion on them. Jesus had compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad. I see people giving up hope and fainting all the time. I see people scattered abroad. They're wandering. They don't know what hope is and they don't know where hope comes, comes from. But I do. I see people out there like sheep having no shepherd. Well, I've got one. Bah. I'm a good sheep. I'm a good sheep. And I know the good shepherd. And if I see somebody off course, well, the love that's been shed abroad in my heart will cause me, will compel me to go and tell them of the good shepherd. It will cause me to go and to help lead them to good water. Where'd we leave off? Verse 37. Matthew 9, 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Verse 38. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Well, why doesn't God just do it himself? The next chapter, the next verse. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, how many stood up on the day of Pentecost? Twelve. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He gave them power. He gave them power. He gave you power. He gave you power. We plant seed. We plant the word when we, when we preach. 
We plant the seed when we preach. We water the seed when we pray. We plant seed when we preach. We water seed when we pray. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. You can't make it grow, but you can plant the seed and you can water the seed. Matter of fact, if you care for the seed you plant, you will water it. If you care for the seed that you plant, you will water it. Why? Because you know that seed planted without water doesn't spring up into new life. The word preached without the Holy Ghost is dead letter and doesn't cause life. But the word preached that's rained upon by the Holy Ghost brings life. Zechariah 10.1 Ask for rain. Ask for rain in the day of the latter rain. This is the day of the latter rain. This is the day of the Holy Ghost. Stand up on your feet with me and ask for rain. 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 The reign of the Holy Ghost. It rains on the just and the unjust. So it's rained on you. Bring the rain to the unjust. Bring the rain. Lord, send the rain. Lord, send the rain. You filled us with the Holy Ghost. Now, Holy Ghost, fall upon us. Fall upon us. You've anointed us to preach your word. You've anointed us to plant seed into the hearts of men. We pray for rain. We pray for rain, Lord. We pray for rain. We pray for rain. You've got to know that the anointing follows you. It's not just to bless you, but it's to confirm you. It's not just to bless you, but it's to work for you and to work through you. It's not just to bless you. It's to move through you. Bring the rain. 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 For years when I was growing up, we had prayer meetings. And we would come into prayer meetings and we would intercede. We would intercede and supplicate for that matter too. Over nations of the earth. We would intercede over nations of the earth. We would pray for Russia. Why? Because we had people in Russia that we cared for. And we knew the word was being preached. And we would pray for the reign of the Holy Ghost to water that seed that was being planted in Russia. Well, the Iron Curtain fell. We weren't the only ones praying. People all over the world were praying. Well, you can pray for China too. We got people in China planting the seed of God's Word. Pray for rain for the people of China. Pray for rain for the people of China. We got people in Turkey planting seed of God's Word. These are people that we're a part of. Yes. Pray for rain for the people of Turkey. But I want to tell you this. The Scripture is very clear. We reap what we sow. And this nation, the United States of America, has sown men and women into every country on this earth. We have sown and we have sown and we have sown. We've put seed all over this world. Other nations have too. 
Thank God for England that allowed seed to come here. But we've planted in every continent on the globe, every inhabited continent on the globe, and I suppose there's probably a Christian or two even on Antarctica. So I want to tell you, there is seed in the ground of this land. There is seed also in the ground of this land. Pray for rain upon the United States of America. Pray for rain upon the United States. Pray for rain upon the United States. You have got to turn your believing into understanding that seed has been planted in the ground. And the Holy Ghost rain will water that seed and it will spring up into life. Because the Lord waits for the precious fruit of the earth. What's he waiting on? Why hasn't he come back? He's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. He's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. Lord, send the rain. Send the rain, Lord. Send the rain. We plant the seed. And we'll make it rain by asking you, Lord, send laborers into your harvest. And Lord, send the rain in the days of the latter rain. The church all the time wants to quote the verses. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then will I hear their prayer and heal their land. But what I'm telling you is, seed is in the ground. Seed is in the ground. So you can pray for repentance. But I'm asking for new life. There's new life coming to this land. There's new life all over the earth. All over the earth. All over the earth. Because he's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. He is waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. But it will not be ready. It will not be ready. Until the rain comes upon the seed. The former rain has come. The latter rain it's raining. It's raining. It's raining. You must change your hope. You must change what you see. You must change what you say. It's raining. I don't see a dry land. I see a land receiving the rain of the Holy Ghost. I see a land receiving the rain of the Holy Ghost. I see a land receiving the rain of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Now I know I held you a little late, and I don't really apologize. I'll get in trouble later on by many of you, I'm sure. But I... Yes. I'm going to ask the people to bear with me because two prophets that I know and have known for over 40 years have said to me, I need to dis... No, not, not, that, not the word I want. To mentor my son in preaching. And I'm going to ask you to be understanding with me as I do things that look like I quench the Holy Ghost. Because I'm not raising crops, I'm raising sons. You remember that story? about the farmer that worked his kids so hard. But I'm going to sit back. But when you say things like that, I come out fighting. You know I do. Well, I didn't say it as an indictment against you. I apologize. I know, I know. But you said you're going to get in trouble later. And he is. By many. <laughs> Listen, God is doing a work in this church. Yes. yes. Amen. And, and the time is coming. I got about another year here probably. Okay. And, and there's a transition taking place. And Jonathan has a great anointing on his life. He's got a more ability than I have. Okay, when God called me, he called me out of such a, a, a mess. I was willing to fight and die. If the whole world, I'd stand against the whole world. And that's what it was taken back in those days to get the word of faith out on the frontier, you know, out on the front line. And that's what we've done. And now there'll come a time for me to turn the reins over. This group of people, I want you to stand and I want you to support Jonathan and, and the rest of our family and the work that God's doing in the church. But I want you to also know that I'm not dead to the Spirit of God and I'm not trying to quench the Spirit of God, but you work with me here as we make this transition. <laughs> what we're gonna start doing is turning the service over to John at about 10.30. <laughs> no, that's... Now, he can sing his whole service if he wants to. But we've got to come to a place where the Word, you can only eat so much meat. You know what I'm saying? You can only handle so much. And I believe that I've made all the mistakes that John will ever make, I've made them a dozen times over. I've made so many mistakes I can't criticize anybody, and I'm not here to criticize. My intention is never to criticize John. He flows in the Holy Ghost. Yes, he does. But when you're in the middle of something, you can't see things like you can on the outside. And I've been preaching for 46 years, almost 47. Amen. And most of that, I didn't have a mentor to help me. I had my wife swinging the watch. <laughs> and most of the time, I didn't listen. I don't, I don't, I didn't, I shouldn't have done this. I don't want to do this at the close of a service. I just want you to know we are going to talk. I understand. <laughs> I understand. And I want you to know that I love my son. Yes. I love my son. And I am honored that God has, has blessed us with all our kids, all our kids and our grandkids. And I believe that's why God let me live. I'm serious about it. I've talked to the Lord a lot about it. I believe that's why he let me live. They're going to do a great work for God. And thank you for supporting that and supporting the transition because people get to know whoever feeds them. So you, you have loved me because I have fed you the Word of God. But there comes a time you've got to switch that allegiance, you see. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I don't know what God's got for us, but I do know that it's coming up time for us to be moving on. That doesn't mean we'll be disconnected. Just means that someone else will be in the saddle and we'll be doing something else. Now I'm gonna stop. <laughs> what I wanna tell you is the time of the end is, is not near. It is not near, it is not near, it is here. It is here. And we have got to believe the word of God that when you plant seed, you also carry water by the Holy Ghost. Yes. And when you come here, if you only receive seed, you only got half of what you need. Yeah. Yeah. So when I minister, I don't want to give you seed alone. But I want you to receive seed and I want you to receive water. And I want you to be a good little kettle watering pot. 
and go and rain on the seed that you plant through the earth. It's important that we change the mindset of the way we see ourselves, the way we see this body, the way we see this community, the way we see this country. If we continue to speak of this country as a land that, it's, that is dead and dying, we will continue to have a land that is dead and dying. If we continue to speak of this land as a land that has rejected God, we will continue to have a land that will reject God. But if you will recognize that you carry God in your words and in your touch, the Lord of the harvest will receive of the precious fruit of the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is in you and he is upon you. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Kevin, you can dim the lights, keep the music rolling. I encourage you, don't walk out of here half empty. Get saturated. Get saturated. Get saturated. Get saturated. He's not going to pin you down and fill you. But you can open up. You can open up. You can be a good sponge. I learned how to receive of the Holy Ghost when I was a kid just by thinking of myself as being a sponge. Not as a dry, crusty, hard sponge because I know that I have water in me by the Holy Ghost. A wet sponge receives water quickly. I'm a wet sponge. I can be saturated until I leak out the Holy Ghost. Get saturated before you go. God bless you. Hallelujah.